everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. I'm going to chuck a Philip DeFranco and say, let's just jump into it, because Jacqueline Hill made that video, let's talk. But you know what, Jacqueline? We need to talk. Because for someone with an audience of 5.4 million subscribers to jump online and make a video that reaches over 2.2 million views so far, it's been out for a day and there's 2.2 million views, for someone that influential to make a video in which they say that negative advertising is not a thing is absolutely ridiculous. She's either completely naive, she's lying to herself, or she's lying to her audience. Let's just... Let's just take a second to listen to what she said, because I've had a few people tweeting at me. People have been tweeting me because I made a comment saying, you know, just because you don't see it happening doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And people are saying, oh, you're taking her words out of context, you're twisting her words. Let's just listen to her exact words for a second, shall we? This person claimed that brands offer influencers $80,000 to get a negative review about a competitive brand. When I saw this, I was on my phone. I was sitting right here, my kitchen counter, and I literally just dropped my phone and I was like, this is not a thing. This is not a thing. <laughs> like, this is not a thing. If one person at one moment said, oh yeah, I'm willing to do this for $80,000, okay, that's weird and I do not agree with that whatsoever. Like, where's your morals? But this is not a thing. It's something I've never heard of. And I have heard of a lot. I know a lot about a lot of YouTubers and a lot of just like social media influencers out there. Never once have I heard, heard this. She says it clear as day. This is not a thing. Well, you know what, Jacqueline? This is a thing. This is a very real thing. And for anyone that's seen part one of my series, you'll know why I know that this is a thing. So I definitely recommend that you go watch part one and two before you continue with this video, because otherwise you'll be missing some important information. There is such a thing as negative marketing or comparative advertising. It is a very real thing. It's not illegal. It's very common. And there are no set guidelines in place to regulate it. I think Jaclyn Hill is so extremely irresponsible to come online and tell her audience her audience, who is extremely easily influenced, for her to say this is not a thing, they're going to believe her. But what evidence does she have to prove that it's not a thing? When there's people out there like me that have evidence to prove that it is a thing. Today I'm going to show you some examples of negative advertising campaigns and some really easy ways that brands and influencers can post sponsored content without needing to disclose to their audience that it's sponsored. Let me explain what negative marketing is. I'll just pull up a definition. Now you can look at this yourself. I'm going to put a lot of references down below. So if you want to do your own independent research, you can. I'm just going to read this out. Negative advertising attacks or criticizes a sponsor's competitor by emphasizing attributes that are similar to, but weaker than those of the sponsor. It is designed to draw the audience's attention to an opponent's weakness through an aggressive one-sided assault. Negative advertising is not illegal. In fact, the FTC encourages negative advertising. Listen to this. The FTC encourages advertisers to make comparison with their competitors with the broad public welfare objective of creating more informative advertising. The FTC argues that this form of advertising can stimulate comparison shopping, encourage product improvement and innovation, and foster a positive comparative environment. So right after Jacqueline posted her video where she said, this is not a thing, this is not a thing, the first thing I did, I hopped on an influencer marketplace. I talked about influencer marketplaces in my first video. I hopped on one of these and within five minutes, I found four comparison campaigns that either wanted people to directly compare their product to the competitor's product, or they just flat out wanted people to make reviews about their competitors. Just let this sink in. I spent five minutes looking on one of these places and I found four campaigns like that. Look how many influencer marketplaces there are. If on one of them I found four campaigns, imagine how many campaigns there are like that out there. Just imagine. Now I've had people tweeting at me saying things like, mm, yeah, right, okay, so you're saying that there's such a thing as negative campaigns, where's the receipts? 
Well, unfortunately, a lot of these websites, when you sign up to them, they make you sign a confidentiality agreement. It specifically states in the terms and conditions of the websites that all information pertaining to a campaign is confidential and must not be shared. However, that doesn't stop you doing your own independent research. If you have access to any of these websites, I highly recommend that you just take five minutes out of your day to go and look at the websites. Just, just have one look. Just have a little sticky big. Just go control F, you know, search, find. Just type in the word negative or type in the word comparison. You'll find those sort of campaigns and they're everywhere. They're offering people thousands of dollars. Here's one right now. Let me, let me just read this out to you. Now you can find this yourself if you have access, earn $2,500. It's got a little bit about the brand. It says about the product. And then it says campaign goals. It says we would like influencers to either provide a full review of the thing or a tutorial as to how to use the thing. Comparisons to similar products like this one and this one are highly recommended. Now it doesn't specify there that they want you to say speak negatively of those other products, but it does say that they highly recommend that you draw comparisons. Now there's a lot of campaigns like that where they encourage you to pick up the competitor's product and their product and talk about the flaws of the competitor's product. Now that competitor's product could have 50 positive points, but they'll just ask you to mention the four negatives. If there's only four negatives and there's 50 positives, they'll tell you forget about all the positive things, just talk about the negative things and then talk about all the positive points of ours. Now there's nothing illegal about that. Now I'm not saying that people like Jaclyn Hill or any of these big influencers, I'm not saying that they spend their time stalking through influencer marketplaces. That's what they have agents for, that's what they have managers for. Smaller influencers receive these sort of deals all the time. I have a small platform and every week I get emails in my inbox either asking me to specifically give a negative review of a product or they're asking me to do a comparative review. Now. I'm also not saying that it's only small influencers that receive these sort of deals. There is a Reddit forum right now, active, that is focusing on my very first video. And one of the comments in that Reddit forum is really interesting. I'm not gonna read the specifics of this comment. However, feel free to go find the Reddit forum and you can see this comment for yourself. It basically says, in regards to my first video, it says, ugh, this is all true. I worked as an intern at a particular agency and I received a phone call that I put through for a particular influencers manager to close a deal with a particular brand. It says he got paid $70,000 to bash them. Do you remember this person's negative review of this brand? It was paid for by this brand. Now I'm not naming the brands but just go on the Reddit forum and you can see it for yourself. Now once you find that comment just Seriously, no seriously, just pause this video, go have a look at the Reddit forum talking about my first video, you'll find the comment. Look at the video that this person is talking about. You'll notice something interesting. The product that he is negatively bashing, there's no links to that product in the description box of that video, but you know what there is a link for? There is an affiliate link for the company that this person is claiming paid for the negative review. Just let it sink in. This person, whether they're credible or not, whether this is true or not, this, this is a comment that is written here where someone is saying they allegedly interned at an agency that represented this big influencer. Allegedly. A particular company paid him $70,000 to give a negative review of their competitor. Now, you're probably thinking, surely that's illegal, right? Surely, surely it's illegal for brands to pay people to speak negatively of their competitors, right? That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, surely this is illegal. So you know what I did today? I spent six hours today contacting the four major advertising regulators in Australia and I posed a scenario to them. I actually posed two scenarios to them. I rang them all twice. I left a little bit of time in between. I rang them all in the morning and then I, I rang them all in the afternoon. Marty, what are you doing? I posed as a small business owner the first time. Now the scenario that I put forward, I said, I make candles and a competitor candle company is offering to pay people $5,000 to speak negatively about my candles. They want people to talk about the fact that my candles are paraffin candles and they don't smell very strong. And they want them to talk about the fact that paraffin wax is considered to be carcinogenic. The four advertising regulating bodies that I spoke to today all gave me the same answer. They said if the negative points that they're bringing up are true and they're not a misrepresentation of your product, they're legally within their right to make that video. I said this to all of them. I said, so wait, what you're saying is 
a company can pay my competitor to talk about all the bad things to do with my product and that's legal? The answer was yes. The answer was, as long as there is no misleading statement in the negative review, it is completely legal to create that review. So then the second time that I rang, I posed a different scenario. I pretended to be someone else. I said, hi there, I'm a small business owner and I'm going to be running an advertising campaign soon. I'm gonna be implementing influencer marketing. I don't wanna pay people to directly talk about my product, but what I want them to do is talk about my competitor's product. Now, do they have to disclose that it's a sponsored video if they're not endorsing my product? You know what the answer was? Nope, they don't have to disclose it. I'm not joking guys. Now, I'm in Australia, remember? So I highly recommend that you do your own independent research. If you really want the answers, just call the advertising regulators in your own country and pose a scenario to them like what I did. I was told that if the sponsored video is not a direct endorsement of a product, so if the influencer is not directly saying, I love this product, you should buy this product, if they're not advertising a product or endorsing a product, they don't need to disclose that the video is being paid for. So what does that mean? That means if a competitor pays someone to create a video in which they specifically speak negatively of a product, because that video is not a paid endorsement, the influencer doesn't need to disclose that it is a paid sponsorship. Just, just let it sink in. So let's go back to the scenario that the uh, Reddit user talked about, right? So the Reddit user said that a big influencer was paid, allegedly, $70,000 by a company to give a negative review of their competitor. Now, because he didn't directly promote the company that was sponsoring him, because he wasn't saying to people now, this one is bad, but this one is really, really good and you should buy this one instead. Because he didn't say that, because the entire video was specifically a negative video about another product and it wasn't endorsing a product, it was only speaking negatively of a product, he didn't legally have to say that that was a sponsored video. But the source in that Reddit forum is saying that he was paid $70,000 to make that video. So uh, let's just say a big brand pays an influencer $70,000 to talk about a product and that person says maybe it oxidizes quickly or it's difficult to apply or the colors aren't accurate as to what they are in the pan. If all of those things that they're saying are true and not misleading, it's completely legal for them to make a video where they exclusively focus on the negatives and they don't talk about the positives. So with this information being put forward, can Jaclyn Hill really, really continue to say, this is not a thing? This is not a thing. Can she really sit there and say that? At least James Charles had the decency to come onto my video and comment. He said something like, now while I've never been offered a campaign like this, I'm sure that it does happen. At least James had the decency to recognize that. He said he's never been offered it, but he's sure it does happen. But for Jacqueline to come along and say, this is not a thing, when there's people out there that can prove that it is a thing, how can she sit there to her audience of 5.4 million people and tell them something that critical and that important that they need to know? How can she sit there and tell them that it's not a thing? The other thing is, just quickly, I'll just touch on some of the other ways that brands can legally run a sponsorship without the influencer having to say that it's a sponsorship. So uh, let me pose this situation to you. Imagine an airline is about to have a sale on flights to Japan. They could pay a huge group of influencers to make videos where they say, for example, make like a Q&A about Japan or my favorite Japanese food or a video about Japanese fashion. They could do an ad campaign en masse where they pay influencers to make videos, sponsored content, they're, well, they're being paid to make the video. It's not necessarily sponsored content because they're not endorsing anything in particular. They're just all talking about Japan at the same time. They can then release all the tickets to Japan at a really, really low sale price and all the people that have been watching those videos where everyone's been talking about Japan and how much they love Japan. It's front and center in their minds then that they wanna to go to Japan. And then the company can launch the sale tickets to Japan and then all of a sudden those tickets sell out because everyone's had it in their mind that they want to go to Japan. This happens with all sorts of products. It's not just tickets to overseas. It happens with makeup products. They can pay influencers to talk about certain products but never ever talking about their product but just talking about a certain type of product. And then all of a sudden that product can then launch and everyone's already been thinking about products like that and all of a sudden that product launches and bam, the product sells out. No one had to ever mention that they were being paid to create the content, but it's still part of a larger marketing campaign. You can find this information online. I'll just read it out to you. It says only 
Advertising content that promotes a product or service needs to be identified as advertising. If an advertiser creates material that is promotional in nature, but does not promote a product or a service, no advertising disclosure is needed. So remember what I was saying about the negative reviews, if they're not promoting a product or a service, no advertising disclosure is needed. That's how companies can get away with paying people to make negative reviews. They are not advertising anything, they are not promoting anything, it is not advertising material and it doesn't have to be disclosed as such. Another example, if the content includes merely product placement or inclusion of a product or service with no mention of features and benefits of the product and no endorsement of the product, no advertising disclosure is needed. So, I mean, this mirror for example. My best friend made me this mirror, it's in the background of my videos. If he was paying me $10,000 a month to have this mirror in my videos, I would never have to tell anyone that I was being paid to have this in the background of my video. Because I'm, I'm not directly talking about it, never once do I talk about this mirror, but it's there. That's product placement. People do it all the time with products, maybe a makeup brush. Maybe they use the makeup brush on their face every single time, and they're being paid to use that makeup brush and no other makeup brush. They're being paid to exclusively use that makeup brush. But if they don't actually mention the, the makeup brush, if they don't say the name of it or they don't say the brand, they don't have to tell anyone that they're being sponsored to make that video. So look, to conclude, Jaclyn Hill is fooling herself if she thinks that negative advertising is not a thing. The advertising industry is worth $1.2 trillion and influencer marketing at the moment is worth about 2 billion, but they estimate it'll be worth 10 billion by 2020. So for Jacqueline to come along and make a comment like that on an industry that is worth billions of dollars, for her to say that a particular element or aspect of that industry is not a thing, she might see her own side of that industry. She sees the deals that she has going on, the collaborations she's working on, the things that her friends talk about, the marketing campaigns she's worked on for the collaborations that she's part of. But for her to comment across the entire industry and say that something doesn't happen, when there's people out here like me, for example, like people in these forums that are coming forward every day, people in the comments section of my videos coming forward, people that work in marketing coming forward saying, I saw a campaign where so-and-so was paid to say this, or I saw a campaign where this person bashed on this product and they were paid $70,000 to do it. There's people that are making these comments out there, but those people, because they don't have 5.4 million subscribers on YouTube, no one's gonna listen to them. So at the end of the day, guys, what you really need to take away from this, you need to change the way that you consume content online. This isn't designed to be a witch hunt, it's not designed to be me telling you guys to go back through everyone's videos and scrutinise every single person that's ever made a comparison on YouTube. That's not what this is about. It's not about the past, this is about the future. This is about a change in the way that you consume content online, because YouTube isn't what it used to be. YouTube used to be a separate entity from mainstream marketing, but now the same strategies that are implemented in mainstream marketing are being used on YouTube every day. So you need to be aware of that and you just need to take a little bit of initiative. If you're ever questioning something, it's just a Google search away. That's all it is. If you see a product being reviewed, don't just simply buy it because someone is raving about it and don't dismiss a product because someone said it was bad. Look for independent reviews. Don't listen to one person, listen to a lot of people. Look at a lot of reviews. Look at public reviews on the website. Maybe customers have left reviews. Do your own independent research. Go into a store, swatch it yourself. Make sure that you shop from places that have a returns policy, for example. You need to look out for yourself because you're working hard for your money and there are people out there that will say things for their own benefit because they're getting paid to say it. And they don't care that you're going to go out and spend your hard-earned money on something that they don't really care that much about. Or even if a product is really, really good, they'll accept a deal to say that it's bad. Not everyone on the internet. There are so many good influencers and good YouTubers out there that do the right thing. And it's easy to spot who they are. But just, just take things with a grain of salt going forward. Just do a little bit of independent research. Just have it in the back of your mind. Just remember that it is not illegal for someone to post a sponsored video negatively talking about a product. They don't have to disclose that they're being paid to do that. They have to disclose if they are endorsing something and trying to convince you guys to buy it. But if they're being paid to turn you off a product, they don't have to disclose that. If there's no endorsement in that video, they don't have to disclose it. So just so you're aware. So Jacqueline, if you're watching this, I would highly recommend that you release a statement of some sort to say that just because you don't see something happening, 
doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Just like James Charles said. James Charles said, while I haven't been offered something like this, I'm sure it does happen. Because for Jacqueline to come along and say, this is not a thing, that is so irresponsible. And I feel so bad for anyone that believes her. So with that, there's a lot of other videos I'm gonna be making. I was meant to be talking about something else today, but Jacqueline had to go release that and I knew that I couldn't hold my tongue. So if you enjoy these videos and you enjoy being informed, keep an eye out for my next ones. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave your opinions down below. If you have heard of anything like this yourself, maybe if you work in marketing and you have something to say, leave it down below. I'm always reading the comments and I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mwah.